Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Here is Saban's Power Rangers Shattered Grid. This is going to be a big box expansion for the game. You can see they're focusing here on the White Ranger and some other different aspects of the Rangers. Now, I'm not a huge Power Ranger guy. Obviously, I know what it is. I used to go to Hollywood Studios at Disney, and they would be there all the time. So I've met them in person. Ha, ha, ha. But it's going to give you a good idea what's going to come in, the characters you're going to get, the different miniatures, what they look like, the component list is on the back. Man, that is fantastic, especially for an expansion. You can kind of see what you're getting in here and what world you're jumping into. From what I can tell, this is an alternate reality that's threatening the Power Rangers. So if you're following along with the storylines, I am sure that you know what's going on here. Let's open up the box and take a look and see what's inside. So when you first open it up, you're going to get a Renegade advertisement. I love these. I know some people may not. Not only does it tell me what's out there for Renegade, I like to go back three or four years later and take a peek at this and see, oh, that was what up. This is really cool because it tells you everything that's currently out for the series. So if you just got, you know, something, obviously you bought this because it's in here, but this is in this too. You're like, oh, so this is what else is available. This is great. I'm surprised more people don't do that. A little bit of advertisement for some comics there. You're going to get a look at the rule book, which we'll take a look at in a second. You'll have your cards and all your stuff inside of the box here. And we'll take a look at this in just a moment. So let's take a look at the rule book here. You're going to have an introduction that kind of tells you what's going on here. The alternate reality, the Shattered Grid expansion, what it kind of gives you. List of all the components with pictures. That should be a must in every rule book. Then you're going to have about how to integrate the expansion content, which tells you to look, refer to the rule book. So a lot of these rules are already in the initial rule book. Enemy die rules, how they work, attaching cards, and time force. They keep it very, very simple with a lot of the information already published in the original rule book, which is great to have everything together. So a lot of times I think you're going to be mixing and matching a lot that's in here. Just one sheet. It's a little flimsy, but it's nice. It's in color, and it has a list of the components. Great job. So let's look at a few of the components here. You're going to have a new central location, and this is called Time Force Headquarters. And this will give you a different action other than what the command center does. What it allows you to do is immediately transwarp. This allows you to move to another location of your choice without spending an action if you're there. You cannot power up when they move to the Time Force headquarters. That benefit only applies to the command center. So it's a little bit different thing that you can have here. That's what you're going to have. You're also going to get two additional boards. You're going to have the Resistance Hideout, which is a 5, and a Zord Graveyard, which is a 6. Now, the Resistance Hideout on the other sides, each time a Ranger in this location is a Zord ability, you must discard the top card of your deck. If you're in the Zord Graveyard, at the start of each action phase, choose one random Zord card from the box, place it at this location. Once per battle, a Ranger in this location may discard a Zord card to use its ability. So that's what these two additional ones will be two of the four that you would use, but you have additional new ones in here. Quickly, I want to go through the cards and the characters that are, are in here, because some of the Power Ranger fans are really going to care about this. Please forgive me, as I don't know a whole lot about Power Rangers, which I'm coming from a different point of view. So this is Hyperforce Red. Once per battle, you may either discard a card to gain a crystal or spin one crystal to draw a card. Hyperforce Black. If there are three or more enemies in your location, reduce the energy cost of all your cards by one. Hyperforce Yellow. Each time you suffer damage before revealing any cards... For defense, you may choose one card from your hand and place it on top of your deck. Whew, that's great for defensive. Hyperforce Pete, you may spin a crystal to take the first turn of the battle, even if there's a keyword of fast. Blue Hyperforce, once per battle, a ranger of your choice may place up to three cards in their hand on the bottom of their deck, then draw an equal number of cards. Then you have Time Force Pink. What you're going to get here is at the start of each battle, you may choose two enemy cards of the same type and swap their positions in the combat. So I can really... Control when people are going to strike. That's really nice. Super Samurai Red. At the end of each battle, add a crystal to your personal storage if you don't already have one. So you want to spend it as quickly as you can because you're going to get it back. You're going to have some new Zord cards here. Lion Hyper Zord. Exhaust this card when any ranger forms an attack to convert all misses to hits. Serpent Hyper Zord. Exhaust this card in a battle. Flip up to two foot soldiers face down as though defeated. Do not remove any foot, foot, foot soldiers from that location so you don't score them towards your next Zord. Ram, Hyper Zord, exhaust this card when any ranger suffers damage or reduce this damage by three. Wow, that's a really good one. I like yellow in this deck. Severus, Hyper Zord, exhaust this card to deal one hit to each three enemy cards. That can be very, very useful. Phoenix, Hyper Zord, exhaust, exhaust this card to allow a ranger of your choice to choose a card from the discard pile, return it to their hand. 
Chronos, Hyperforce, Megazoid. At the start of each battle, each participating ranger may search their deck or discard pile for a card. After their hand, if they do, they must shuffle their deck. Time Flyer 5. Exhaust this card to allow a ranger of your choice to play a card in battle, taking place in another location as though they were not. That can be really, really helpful. Bullzord. Exhaust this card when any ranger plays a card to reduce that card's energy by one. It's an attack. Add one die to the roll. And then we're back to the front. So those are the Zord cards and the new characters, if you will, that you'll be having in the game. So let's take a look here at Hyperforce Yellow. Going to have some attack cards and specials, and you'll have a whole new deck of those cards. You're also going to have uh, Super Samurai Red. You're going to have some attack cards and maneuver cards. Nothing out of the ordinary. Time Force Pink, some of the more powerful card. You have the V5 Blaster, which I like. has you four dice. They can do some big attacks there. Attack, and you get just three hits. That's very nice for Time Force Pink. One of my favorite new characters to play with. Contrast that with Hyper Force Pink, which is going to have uh, attack special. We can use the amount of uh, hits equal to the amount of crystals that you spend. We've seen that before. Attack with three cubes. And you're going to have that where you roll the dice, but you automatically get a hit. I like those swift strikes. And that's what you're going to see with Hyperforce Pink. With Hyperforce Black, you're going to have a reaction, so you can uh, help people who are suffering damage. A couple attack cards. Attack with three dice. Uh, there's an attack with four. That's the big hit. But after resolve, add one to each enemy card that's already been resolved. That's very nice if you can hit this one later in the turn. Then we're going to see Hyperforce Blue, and it's going to have a maneuver where you can gain some crystals, some of the normal attacks that you're going to see here, and you're going to have this attached. You can attach this to an enemy card now. Reduce all damage dealt by that card by two. So the Python Crab, this is a new thing that's in this set, that you're going to be able to attach these enemy cards and reduce their effectiveness, which is really, really cool, and I like that. No humongous attacks with this one, but a very good defensive set. And then the last one you're going to get is Hyperforce Red. Uh... You're going to see that we're going to get hits by how many crystals you use, You'll be able to draw cards, which is unusual, uh, gain a crystal. Next time he performs, he gets a plus two hits. So you want to use that a little bit earlier in the turn, but no big giant, giant attacks in this one. So you're going to get some new cards for the resistance, the new hideout that you're going to have. And these are going to bring out these Mastodon troopers that will come out. So that's going to be a new type of enemy that you're going to have. Here in the Zord Graveyard, which is the other new location you're going to get, you're going to bring out even more troopers that will be coming out. So depending on what locations you choose, you'll just kind of shuffle those in. While we're on the subject, let's take a look at the Mastodon troopers, which are going to get a set of cards here. And for the most part, you see twos and threes that will be part of this. Now, they do have some fast ones that can get in here and hit you before you do. Deal four total damage, roll two dice. That's a new thing's going to be in this one, where the enemies now will be rolling dice for hits and deal that much to the players. Deal two damage to each ranger. And drain one, each ranger must discard a card from their hand. So these are supposed to be more like foot soldiers, not supposed to be too difficult to, to defeat. Now you're going to get a monster card here for what's referred to as the Black Dragon. And that's this guy that you're going to see here. And when you turn him over, you're going to see fours, fives, and that's all he's going to have for health. So not tremendously in the, the health but he deals five damage, which can be brutal, and there's three of them in a day. He also has a fast, which means he'll attack before you. Each ranger must shuffle one random card from their hand back in their deck, then discard the top two cards. That can be pretty brutal. And then he has two guards, deal three damage. Whoever suffer the most uh, must discard up from their hand the card with the most shields. And passive, while well, this is in play, each time a ranger plays a card, you drain a crystal after it resolves. So you need to get rid of his five, his chaos wave, as quickly as possible. The second monster card you're going to get is the Ranger Slayer. And this is going to be like a pink Power Ranger type. I don't know the history of it. You're going to get a six, uh, some fours, and that will conclude it. So the Bow of Darkness is the big health one he's going to get. Deal six damage to the lead Ranger. That can be pretty brutal. It's going to be a fast, so that will strike before the Rangers. Roll four dice and deal that much. You've seen that new mechanic coming in back in. There's three of those. They'll... Deal three damage to each ranger and skip the next ranger turn. So you skip a turn. That can be really brutal. And the last one's a thunder kick, which is a fast. Once again, they're going to attack before the rangers. The ranger with the most cards in their hand must discard cards in their hand if they have discarded at least four shields. So this one can be a very different one the way it's playing. You're rolling dice for damage and you're discarding a lot of cards. That can be pretty brutal. And the last set of cards is the new boss, which we've all been waiting for, is Lord 
Dracon. Dracon? 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 I don't know. And you can see him there sitting on his throne. So you're going to get fives, some sixes, and a seven that would be in here. So the Cyclone Strike is pretty brutal. It has a fast on it, which means he'll strike before the Ragers. Deal four, then three, and then two damage. That's just really nasty. And there's three of them. You're going to have a guard, which means he will protect the people before around him adjacent. So he would have to be hit first. The lead ranger must discard two random cards in her hand. Deal damage to each other ranger equal number of shields on the discarded cards. A fast and a guard. You don't see that too often. Deal d three damage and drain two of the crystals. There's two of those. He does have a seven. It's a passive ability. While this card's in play, when crystal is spent or drained, place the energy tokens on this card. Each time the Lord deals damage, increase that damage one for each token on here. Wow. His last one's Thunderclash, deal three damage to each ranger twice. So you can be pretty brutal. I don't think he's one of the most hard ones, but he does take a different style of play in order to beat. He's a pretty darn good boss. So here's the Mastodon Trooper. You're going to get 12 of these. You can see he's just like an army guy here. He's got a nice little gun on him. Now, once again, these are going to be chunky, big miniatures, bigger than what you're used to. Not as much detail as something like Mythic Battles Pantheon, which I think is the gold standard, but better than like a fantasy flight miniature, if you ask me. These are very sturdy. You don't have to worry about them breaking at all. You can drop them quite a few times if that happens on accident. So you're going to have 12 of those. Here's the boss, Lord Dracon, Dracon, Dracon. And you can see he is fist up and... He is ready to go. He does not like to wear a shirt on his lower back. No tattoo there. No tramp stamp. You can see his dagger coming through. He's very, very cool looking. I like this guy quite a bit. He looks like he can deal some damage to you. Hey, you. I see you. The Black Dragon is a giant miniature. Very big. You can see his tail coming across the back. Lots of detail in him for the comparison to the other ones in the series. You can see him quite a bit. He's got this horn coming off. It's very sturdy. Don't have to worry about that thing breaking at all. You can see the detail that he has. A very cool pose. I like his pose quite a bit. I think he looks really, really good. And finally, we come to the Ranger Sl uh, Slayer, which is the final monster. I do like action poses like this with the cape going. I think that looks really cool. You can see the bow and arrow. She or he just looks like it is ready for a battle here. And a very, very cool miniature. You can see that cape just kind of flowing in the wind there. I think that's excellent. This is one of the coolest looking miniatures in the set. It's not a big bad monster. Boy, does it look sharp. The first miniature you're gonna see here is Hyper Force Red. You can see he is ready for action battle. And he has these like Wolverine claws coming off of him, but he's so red, it's kind of hard to see the detail, but there's not a whole lot of detail. It's kind of been shaded down. So not the most impressive miniature of all. Then here you're gonna have a Hyper Force Black, which is kind of cool because he has his shield coming off. And then you can kind of see the detail on that. But once again, not a whole lot of detail on him. Not a lot of muscle coming through. A lot of it is very, very flat. Maybe that's what the Power Rangers look like, but I do like the addition of the shield there. I think it looks really, really cool. Next is Hyper Force Yellow. I mean, these are really yellow. So you're gonna see this big hammer that he's holding on the back here. It's a very cool looking miniature. Once again, you know, a lot, not a lot of definition and everything. Maybe a little, little plain, but the colors are very vibrant in this. And he does look like a Power Ranger, which is really nice. Here is Hyper Force Pink. It may be a second to figure out which one. She does not have the heart on her. So this is Hyper Force Pink. You can kind of see an action pose here. She has this thing coming down. Once again, not a whole lot of detail to this. I don't know if it's necessary in the Power Ranger uniforms, but they seem to be the least detail of the group, but a very neat looking one at that. Here is Hyper Force Blue. I like this huge trident that he has down here. Very, very cool looking. Once again, you know, very plain. Not a lot of detail in anything, maybe it's how the Power Ranger uniform is. Uh, but this is a really cool one. I like the trident, I like how it's blue, I like how it's all set up. I think it looks really, really neat. Time Force Pink is a really cool looking one. She has the heart on her chest, that's how I was able to tell who it is without having a wide knowledge of the source material. But she's a very cool one. She has this big, giant gun, which just looks really cool. I like how she's there, she's tough for business. My daughter really likes playing as this one quite a bit. And the last one is Super Samurai Red. I like this sword. I just like the way he looks. I know he's kung fu and karate and all that stuff with Power Rangers, and he just looks sharp. And I like the way there's a lot more detail in him than maybe some of the others. And red's my playing color, which is really helpful for him, and they did a good job on him. So how do I feel about this expansion? Well, this is a pretty strong expansion. And if money is no object, this may be one of the first ones that you go for. You're going to get some alternate Power Rangers and an alternate board that you can play in. You're going to have some new mechanisms like rolling the dice and attaching cards. That's something that we didn't see in the base game. 
going to get some new mo- two new monsters and a new boss. You're also going to get a new minion set, some new foot soldiers and the Macedon troopers, and that's going to be pretty neat. More and a little bit of added rules and some different boards adds up to a pretty darn good expansion. This could be the first place you go if you're looking for additional content, a little bit more rules, something different to do with the rolling of the dice and attaching cards, nothing groundbreaking, but something new here other than just variety, although there is variety in this box. I think that if you got the base game and you're looking for somewhere to start and price is not an object, I feel like this will be more expensive than some of the other little knickknacks you can add to it. You know, the Megazoid uh, miniature really doesn't do anything. The additional characters that you might have, the miniatures, you know, you already have those. This gives you new things to do. You're still getting the same Power Rangers, just different colors and different uh, from different factions inside of the game, which is really cool. Um, and you're going to get new ways to play. I love the new boards. I like how they interact. I like having all that variety. When I'm playing with my son, we can kind of mix things up. And this definitely does it. So for me, it's a thumbs up. It's an absolute keeper for me. And it might be the first expansion that you should search out for if it's available on the market. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate you tuning in. If you liked it, please like it and hit that little subscribe button. That really helps out the channel. Let's us know that you're getting the videos that you want. If you agreed or disagree with what I said, feel free to comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say, and I promise that I will comment back. Thanks for watching, and everybody else, keep playing games.